our next guest just happened to be the highest Canadian picked in the NFL draft since Orlando Franklin went 46th to the Denver Broncos in 2011 and just the fifth Canuck to go in the first two rounds since 2000. And that's if you include Nikhil Harry, who left Canada as a baby. So it doesn't happen all that much, Arash. It doesn't happen all that much. Five days ago, taken in the second round, 49th overall out of Abbotsford, BC caught over a th- for over a thousand yards with Notre Dame last season. Chase Claypool joins us on Tim and Sid. Uh, Chase, thanks for making time, man. Um, let's get to the football in a minute. Oh. We know you like hoops. We're talking about our Mount Rushmore of Raptors today. <laughs> who who are your top four Raptors of all time, Chase? Uh, I would. That's a good question to start things off. Um, I'm a more modern era guy, um, sure. so I'm going to say uh, Vince Carter's automatic. All right. Um, I would say Kyle Lowry, Demar Derozan, yep. and mm-hmm. uh, Akeem Olajuwon. He uh, spent <laughs> some time with the, the Raptors. Yeah? I covered that press conference, <laughs> homie, back in the day. Uh, yes, he did spend some time. That is a so solid. So no Kawhi Chase. A solid Akeem pull. Uh, okay, I would say, I don't know, just like being an actual Raptor. Um, Kawhi did great things for the city. Ooh, I guess I'd have to sub out. Or Bosh. Kyle Lowry, then. Bosh. Oh okay. my goodness, Lock in. It's a great conversation, isn't it? Oof. Yeah, no. Um, I, I'll stick with that for and then I'll just uh, take take the heat after. All right, listen, we, we know that you were just selected second round in the NFL draft, but I got to ask, as an Abbey Panther, what was the basketball game like? Uh, when I was in school, my basketball game was nice, but right now <laughs> it is not too good. Right, right. Um, I saw the Steelers post the call Mike Tomlin made to you, but I never got to see the other side of that call. What was it like to get – a phone call from the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and what was your reaction to it? Uh, I mean, obviously, it was pretty surreal, pretty insane. Um, I couldn't get the smile off my face, you know. Uh, I kind of kept it a secret from the rest of my family, like, when I was on the call, who was calling, uh, because we were a little delayed. Um, right. So, no, it was super cool. I, I remember talking to him at the uh, Senior Bowl there, and that, that was cool in itself. It was an explosion in the house. What was that moment like, man? Um, yeah, no. Like when I said uh, the Steelers, uh, the whole family just erupted, and uh, obviously everyone was super happy for me and happy that I landed on such a great team. Full disclosure here, Chase. I grew up a Michigan fan, but but hold on, my dad and my son are Notre Dame fans. My little guy even went to a baseball camp at Frank X Stadium. Uh, so I watched a lot of your games, and I was really impressed with your all-around game, uh, blocking specials, like not the diva receiver. Given the dudes that are appreciated in Steel Town, does it feel like a good fit that you're a Pittsburgh Steeler now? Oh, most definitely. Um, you know, that's you know that's why me and my family are so happy because um, the situation was pretty ideal for us, and. Uh, Especially my play style, I think I kind of fit there perfectly. So they've already come out, Chase. The offensive coordinator has said, look, we anticipate Claypool primarily playing wide out. You ran a 4-4-2 at the Combine. You're a bigger guy. You're a physical guy. How as a wide receiver do you figure that your skill set can translate at the next level? Yeah, I think, you know, it just talks about the versatility and the different things you can do on the field. And I think the more things you can do, the better uh, for any organization. I think that's kind of part of the reason why uh, the Steelers picked me up there. Is it true that even though you were the first Canadian scholarship player at Notre Dame since Bill Matulis uh, back in the early 90s when I was playing? For a reference? <laughs> yeah, I know him because he played in the same loop as I played in when I was a kid. But, um, did you did you think that pro football wasn't going to be an opportunity for you until later in your Notre Dame career? Is that true? Uh, yeah, most of it. I would say second, third year. Um, 
was when I started like kind of thinking about freshman year. I was just networking constantly all the time because I didn't think football was kind of uh, a possibility. And then kind of the more you play, the more confidence you get in that aspect. Chase Claypool joining us on Tim and Sid, a second round pick of the Pittsburgh Steelers out of Abbotsford, BC. Um, so when Roethlisberger calls, does it come up <laughs> private number on the phone, or or how does it? Or do you now have been uh, been in your contact list, Chase? Yeah, I have him locked in on my contact. Uh, nice. When he first when he, when he first called, it was just a uh, Pennsylvania area code, so I knew it was someone from there. I didn't know it was Big Ben though. And what did he say? Uh, he just said he was excited to have me on the team and he's excited to get to work. Um, he's going to be heading back to facilities in a few weeks. I guess depending on when they open. But um, he said, as soon as I can, just get down there so we can start throwing together. So, so a kid from Abbotsford gets drafted. Like who in the text or tweet that you got when it was all said and done kind of had you say like, oh, damn. <laughs> This this dude just reached out to me, or this this person just reached out to me. Um, I would say uh, Big Ben and just being uh, teammates with Big Ben it was pretty cool just watching them. Um, and then you know you had um, some tweets from some vets uh, and then teammates now I guess that are in the league who were just congratulating me on everything. So it was pretty cool to see all the support from uh, people in the NFL. Right. Chase Claypool here on Tim and Sid out of Notre Dame headed to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, so it's virtual classrooms now uh, with the uh, with the pandemic and the facilities closed. What are you learning in the classroom work um, as you get the first little taste of the NFL experience, man? Yeah, so we're planning on just doing uh, meetings with the coaches for installation. Um, we have a website to do that where it shows up like the play or whatever and he can talk you through it. So, you know, honestly, it's not too bad. Um, you know, you put yourself in a pretty good setting, and then uh, you just learn, learn quickly that way. And then, you you know, you have more time to get the playbook down before you actually have to start running around. Obviously, you're, you're a physical specimen, and that's part of the reason why you went in the second round. How have you been able to kind of stay fit and stay in shape during isolation? Yeah, I've been working out with my trainer, who I trained with through high school. Um, with Air Raid Academy, so um, we just he has a nice setup in his garage that we do, and then um, we go out on the field and do some field work. Nice, Chase. Uh, it's interesting, man, because more and more Canadians are going south of the border to play football. Just saw Neville Gallimore uh, out of Ottawa. He went third round to uh, to the Dallas Cowboys from the University of Oklahoma. Chuba Hubbard. Uh, an Alberta kid doing damage, yeah. doing damage at Oklahoma State. Um, what what are you making of, of of you guys, your class? So many kids going down and and playing at big time schools, power conferences, and and really making an impact. How, how th- this didn't happen a generation ago. It didn't. It never happened prior to that. What do you figure? How do you figure this is all happening right now for Canadian football players? Yeah, I think the more Canadians that do better, um, D1, um, you know, it opens up some doors and people start realizing that there's a lot of ballers uh, north of the border and they just got to, you know, continue to look and find them. But uh, I think I think it's good. I think it's just getting started. And I, I knew all along that there was some really good players that should uh, be in D1, but that just aren't because of exposure so i think uh, the floodgates are starting to open the the last few games of your notre dame career were ridiculous i mean the last six 37 catches 601 yards nine touchdowns you were mvp of their bowl game like is that part of you coming to the realization that you belonged was it confidence was it opportunity like where did that last kind of spurt come from and did it take you all that time to realize that Man, not only do I belong, but I can dominate. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think into my junior year is when I started uh, realizing I can take over games rather than just be a part of games. Um, and then my senior year kind of just kept that off. So the confidence has been growing ever since, and you know I think it hit a hit a pretty good point where I can kind of sustain that uh, through the rest of my career and even grow it more. What was the coolest part about playing at Notre Dame, man? 
Uh, definitely the fans and the atmosphere there was, was pretty unreal. Nice. It is a special facility. It is a special school, uh, even though I grew up a Michigan fan. Uh, listen, we really appreciate you taking the time. And I know I speak for a lot of Canada when we wish you the best of luck in Steel Town. Thanks for doing this, and let's talk again down the road, okay? Yeah, sounds good. Appreciate you guys having me on. Of course. Uh, there is Chase Claypool, 49th overall to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And uh, sounds like a true Canadian kid. Yeah, he really does, doesn't he? Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting because, as I mentioned, Neville Gallimore, defensive lineman yeah. uh, from Ottawa, went to University of Oklahoma. A couple of priority free agents have signed um, in the NFL. Remember last year, Timmy, around this time, after the NCAA tournament, all the talk about R.J. Barrett and all the talk about the Canadian yeah. basketball players going south of the border and all the noise about the hoops guys? There seems to be so little when it comes to Canadian football players who are playing at big-time schools. Oklahoma State's yeah. in the Big 12. Notre Dame is Notre Dame. Oklahoma is, a, you know, they were in the college football playoff among the top four programs in the country. And it just seems the football guys are off to the side until they end up in the NFL. And then right. we start talking about them. Yeah, no, without a doubt. I got a tweet. I was tweeting out about Gallimore and Claypool before the draft and just kind of kind of getting the names out there. I've always kind of considered myself as a dude that will tout people before others tout them. Yeah. Like I said, I watched a lot of Notre Dame games because of my son and my dad and it ended up like why why don't people talk about these guys the same way and I think it's got to do with the hype train from the south. When they grab a hold of basketball guys, it's almost like the inferiority complex of Canadians needs the hype train down south to grab a hold of them to legitimize the hype. And a second-round pick in the NBA seems to get more hype than a second-round pick in the NFL, which makes no sense, yeah. right? Like, a second-round pick in the NBA doesn't often make teams. A second-round pick in the NFL is going to make the team, like – the OC in Pittsburgh is already talking about how he's going to use Claypool. It's just, it, it seems to me like it's harder to find those guys because the hype train south of the border doesn't gravitate the same way it does to basketball. Yeah. And maybe, but I mean, RJ is going to... For yeah, us, we've got to do the work. Yeah, RJ was so talked about, and some of these players are so talked about and hyped, whereas maybe some of these... Look... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe a Canadian guy goes in there in red shirts and doesn't really, you know, Claypool's a good example. He's the first to admit, as a freshman, even a sophomore, he didn't think he was really going to become much of anything in his career. And then he does in his junior and senior seasons. Maybe it takes a little while longer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe college football isn't as big up here as – we don't fill out brackets for, for bowl seasons the right. way we do for, for March Madness. Maybe that has something to do with it. But yeah, I, it I does, found that really fascinating the last few years. Yeah, it does have something to do with it. And I really – listen, if you watch Tim and Sid, you're covered. We were talking about Claypool's combine. We were talking about his numbers late in the season. We were talking about him being the MVP of, of his uh, bowl game. So all you got to do is watch and or listen to Tim and Sid – and we'll get you covered. You don't have to worry about the rest.